everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is Sinka in today's class we're going to be learning how to make a corset dress with yoke we're going to be using three yards of Ankara fabric and I'm going to be using Chantilly lace for the yoke we're also going to be using bias just for styling adding your boning I'm going to be using this plastic bone I'm going to be needing your bra cup for, and also your interfacing I'm so if you're new to this channel please kindly take a moment to subscribe and to my old subscriber you're all welcome back don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified anytime i put up a new tutorial if you have not done so okay so let's get straight into the tutorial i'm going to be drafting the upper part of the corset first and i'm going to be drafting this on my lining after that i'm going to be using the lining to cut out the fabric and also the yoke okay so the first thing you have to do is to fold your fabric into two this part is unfold so the next thing now is to measure my guideline and i'll roll it then after that i'll input all my vertical measurements so first i'll measure the length of my ham hole then i'm going to measure down my nipple point my nipple point is 10.5 my underboss my underboss is 14.5 and then my waist length my waist length is 17 inches extend the lines so this is my guideline, this is my arm hole length, this is my nipple point line, this is my underboss length, and this is my waistline. So because I'm going to be having a basque waistline, I'm going to be measuring extra 5 inches downward and I'm going to roll it. Next thing now is to input all our measurements. So on the guideline, I'm going to be inputting my shoulder measurements divided by 2. My shoulder is 16 divided by 2. That will be 8 inches, so measure 8 inches. And I'm going to roll it straight to the chest line. Your arm all line gives you your chest line. On the chest line, I'm going to input my bust circumference measurements divided by 4. My bust circumference is 40 divided by 4, that will be 10. I'll measure 10 inches. And I'll come to the waistline. I'm going to input my waist circumference measurement divided by 4. My waist circumference measurement is 32 inches divided by 4. That will be 8 inches. I'll input 8 inches here. Then I'll connect it together. Can you see? So the next thing now is for us to input our dart. I'll come to the nipple point line. I'm going to input my nipple to nipple distance divided by two my nipple to nipple distance is eight inches divided by two that will be four then i'm going to be adding half inch to it for allowance so that that will be four and a half i'll measure four and a half on my nipple points line i'm going to really straight straight down so the next thing now is for you to measure the distance from your nipple points line to your underboss whatever it is you're going to be placing it upward starting from your nipple points okay so on my nipple point to my underboss, I have four inches. So I'll place that four inches starting from my nipple point. I'll place the four inches upward. That is your bust radius. Then I'll rule the line from the nipple point to this new point. I'll come to my underboss line. At this side of the line, I'm going to take half inch that, half inch. And then at the other side, I'm going to take one inch that. Then I'll connect with the nipple point line. And from here also, I'll connect it to the nipple point line. I'll use the cuff part of the ruler to connect it from under boss to the nipple point line. This way. Then I'm going to be ruling these lines all the way, way down. Just really straight down. Like this, can you see? So the next thing now is to input the dart at this upper part too. So at this side of the line, I'm going to take half inch dart, and at this other side, I'm going to take one inch dart. And don't forget this line that you have here, you can decide to bring it a little higher if you don't want it to open too much cleavage. You can bring it up. Okay. At this side of the line, I will take half inch dart, and at this other side, I'm going to take one inch dart. So half inch here. And then one inch here. Then I'll connect them both to the nipple point. Okay. 
So the next thing now is for us to replace all our darts on the chest line. On the chest line, I'm going to measure the dart that passed through that point on the chest line. Here I have exactly one inch, so I'm going to replace it back. Then I'll put my seam allowance. I'm using two inches as my seam allowance. I'll put my seam allowance. Then I'll come to the waistline. I'll measure my dart. I'll replace it and also put my seam allowance. So here I have one and a half for my dart. I'm going to replace it one and a half. And then my seam allowance. Then I'll connect these points together. Can you see? Like this. So the next thing I'm going to do now is for me to replace the dart at this upper part. Here, at this upper part, I have one and a half inch dart. You know, we take half inch here and one here. So that's one and a half. So you add it here like this. One and a half. Can you see? So extend this line and then roll it straight to the, the chest line. Can you see like this then you can finish your hand here by placing your french cuff this way and then okay so the next thing we are going to be doing now is to bring out the shape of our corset because it's a corset dress like i said i'll come to my chest line this is my chest line here i'm going to measure half inch on my chest line i'll measure half inch like this so from this half inch now, I'll place my French cuff and connect it to the under bust line. So just place your French cuff. Your French cuff will give you a perfect shape. To give you a perfect shape. Like this. Just place your French cuff from here. Just connect it. Let it touch. This is your measurements that you have here. Your actual bust measurement here. Alright. Place it this way. And connect it together can you see finish this part you can decide to have a a u neckline or you can decide to have a v depends on what you want but i'll be doing a sweetheart neckline so i'll just place my french cuff this way and get a sweetheart shape can you see So oh, this is my yoke. So the next thing now is for you to input the neckline and also slant the shoulder. Because we're going to be using this part to cut out our yoke. So on the shoulder line, I'm going to input three inches this way. Come to the tip of the shoulder. I'll measure one inch downward. I'll connect the points together like this. Then I'll add my half inch seam allowance to it. Can you see? Like this. Then I'll come to this point, I'll come in by half inch and I'll connect it back this way. Then you connect it back to the shoulder tip. So the next thing is to input your neckline. I'm going to be doing three and a half, half by three and a half. Then I'll connect it together. So the next thing now is for us to cut this out. But before we cut this out, we need to, to measure half inch all around inward like this. It's very important. That's going to be the same allowance. Okay. So just measure your half inch. Inch. Half inch and connect. So the next thing now is for us to cut it out. Our pattern is ready. But before we cut it out, the waistline is going to be... A basque waistline so just match the mouth of your dart together like this is the way i'm going to do it the dart line just match it together this way and you're going to be creating a v a v shape at this side okay so just see one dart line match it to the second dart line this way you can decide to pin it also the waistline just come down by one inch Come down by one inch on your waistline and then from this one inch get your V shape. So this is it. Can you see? So you're going to be cutting it out and then we are going to be placing this on our Ankara fabric to cut everything at once. 
so my fabric is folded into two then i'm going to be placing my lining on top of it so that i can cut it out make sure you align the the folded edge together nicely So this is my yoke. So this is my yoke. I'm going to be cutting my lace with this. So I'll keep it aside. Then I'll, I'll finish the cutting for this part. So when cutting out the dart, I'm cutting out on the red lines, only on the red lines. Right, we're going to be replacing this with another fabric. Okay, so you can just finish up this other side. This is the yoke, this is the cup, and then this is the lower part. So we'll be cutting out this yoke on our lace, and then we're going to be cutting this out on another fabric. We are done with the down part, you can keep it aside. Okay, so I can just remove this first layer so that I can use it as a pattern to cut out the other one. So this is it. F this part now, you know, we have not removed the darts. You need to first remove your darts. But then you can decide how you want your style line to be with this. Okay. You can decide to have it as two pieces by just removing your darts and then it will become two pieces. Or you can decide to have it as three pieces. So my lining is folded into two. And then I'm going to be folding my fabric also into two. My interfacing is folded into four. Once, then I'll place my fabric on top of it. If you are putting your interfacing directly, your interfacing will be folded into four. Okay? So what you need to do now is to place this on top of it to cut it your cup. You can set it, you can decide to have it as just two pieces, the way it is like this, or you can decide to have it into three parts, which is what I'm going to be doing. And to do that, it's just I told you before that we are cutting on the red lines which is our dart intake here so what you need to do now if you want to have it into three parts just fold it into two like this make sure you match the dart at the up this is the upper part you match the dart here to this point this way you make it together and then you pin it then you can now decide how you want to to partition it this tie line is totally depends on what you want but what i'll need to do after painting like this you can see this nipple point line that is on the cup i'm just going to cut through that point this way can you see like this then we are going to be dividing this also like i said it's going to be into three parts So can you see it's into three parts now so you can just label it so this this one is going to be one then this is two and then this is three but then you need to place notching so that you can know which part belongs to which part so from our cutting if you notice this is the front part 
that is center front part so i'm going to be placing notches here and here so that when i'm joining it back to the cup i can know that this belongs to the center we've divided it into three parts so this is one part this is the other one this is the other one so what i'm saying is you need to notch these two points so that you can know they belongs to each other and then you have to like make it a cut here and also here so that you know by the time you're joining it back together you know that this part here belongs to this center part of the panel okay you see so that you can know you need to place notch it this notch it according to how you know that you can be able to manage it okay because it's in pieces now and if you don't get it right it's just it's just going to mess up the whole thing okay so you need to get it right so this is number one this is two and this is three so i'm going to be placing notching here and also here so that i will know that this part is connected to the center front when i'm joining it okay so i'll place these two together this way and i'm going to place notching on this two so that i will know that i'm joining these two pieces together this way after cutting it out okay so i've placed notching here so that i will know that this part is going to come together to become one so i'll be placing notching here and also here so i'm going to be cutting it out now and i'm going to be adding half inch to the inner part of this first layer half inch allowance to only this part and at the side i'm going to be adding one one inch allowance okay so you can decide to to just shock it before you cut it out or you can just do it by sight the way i'm doing so this is the first one we had it one inch allowance here and one inch here and then half inch to the inner part this upper part i didn't have allowance but then you know by the time you pin this line will not be even so just extend it a little and blend it back the way i've done here then this other small small piece to the upper part of it you're going to be adding half inch allowance the inner piece you're not going to be adding any allowance but the outer edge you're going to be adding one one inch allowance all around okay So this is it can you see i had it one inch all around one inch all around the inner part i didn't have any allowance but the upper part i had it half inch half inch then this first layer i had it i had it half inch allowance to the inner part the upper part remained the same but the sides i had it one one inch allowance so this is our cup i'm going to be joining these pieces together so don't forget to place your notching the way i've said so i'm just going to make a cut here and also here then I'll notch this point and also notch here so I'm going to be cutting out the yoke the lace fabric is folded into four so I'll place my yoke on top of it and I'll cut it out the same way adding only half inch allowance to the inner part so I've cut out my yoke you can see I added half inch allowance to only the inner part of the yoke. Okay, so if you open it, you have two pieces. One will serve as lining for the other one. So this is it. So this is the center panel and then this is the other panel. Then as we have it here right here, we also have the same for the lining both the main fabric and the copper fills it with my interfacing can you see all is fused with inter so what i'm going to do next is to join these two panels together first so don't forget this is how it is so you pick one from this side and one from this other side you make them together you pin do the same thing here make them one from this side and one from this other side you merge them together and pin then you take to the, your sewing machine you join together with half inch allowance and also this one with half inch allowance then you repeat the same thing on your lining 
all right so i'll join all the panels together now you join together with half inch seam allowance I'm done joining them together so you make sure you notch. Then after that you open your seam and iron it. You just open your seam and place on your tailor's arm and you iron it. You can see this is two for the main fabric and then we have to for the lining okay so before we proceed we need to go and create our style line with the bias on this joining on this your joining it's optional it's not compulsory you can see how neat and neat and curved it is so it's not it's not compulsory it's optional but i'll be creating a style line on it with my bias so i'll quickly go ahead i'll do that so i'll just place my bias on it i'll just stitch on it So this is how it's looking so the next thing we have to do now is to join this together with this okay don't forget we place notching uh the part that is going to be uh the center let your notching be your guide so i'm joining these two together and i'm also joining these two together okay so i'll take to the sewing machine now i'll match them on top of each other right side to right side and i'll join do the same thing to this other side and also you repeat the same thing on the lining look for the parts that you notch i notched here here also is notched so it's like this then match the corresponding parts together as well okay so you join these two together also okay then you are going to be joining together with half inch allowance can you see so do the other side next thing i have to do now is after joining if there's any excess like this just this tiny thing just blend it and then this is the main fabric so we also need to go back and after ironing we need to iron this then after ironing we also go and create our style line with the bias also to this line that is here we need to iron it first open your seam like this can you see and iron and you can see from wrong side this is how it's looking i've pressed open my seam same thing is applicable to the lining okay so the next thing we're going to do now is to draw our style line that is how you want to position your bias and also to insert your bony okay so when you're inserting your bone you ensure you leave your seam allowance at the upper part and also at the bottom part so you don't cut exactly the same size i'll just keep all this bone in one side so that i'll go ahead and fix my cup Make sure you match the correct, you can see this is the side that I notch that is going to be the center. So just match them together. And yeah, you go ahead and stitch it inside like this. So you just match them together, right side to right side. You stitch the cup around this opening. You can notch the center of your cup so that you can match it with the center of the, of the body. Then you place them on top of each other like this, right side to right side. Then you stitch the cup all around to the left and also to the right okay let's go ahead and do that and then you repeat the same thing to the lining
So I'm done joining the cup together with the body. And this is the main wrapper. And this is how it's looking from the wrong side. Can you see? So the next thing you have to do now, at this upper edge, let's use the lining so that you can understand it better. Okay, so you can see the shape of my sweetheart shape is here on the lining at the center panel. You can see the V shape. You can see that this part now is longer. The cup part now is longer than that position. So you just fold it back into two like this, the way I'm showing you here like this. Then you can still see the shape of your sweetheart shape. Just use your shock and create that sweetheart shape again this way. Can you see? Just follow it the way it is on the center front. If you remember, we added allowance to this upper part and all of that, all of that. So it has altered the shape of the sweetheart uh, neckline that we drew here. But then on the main, on this panel, on this main wrapper, not the cup, on the main, on the main bodies, not the cup this time around. The shape is still there. You can see the shape of the V is still there. You can still see it. Just fold your fabric back. This way and then following that shape you can see the shape of the v just create the sweetheart shape again this way and then you cut all this excess just cut it off can you see as simple as that you can see the shape of our sweetheart is back in shape you can see the shape of the sweetheart so repeat the same thing on the main fabric, fold it back into two. Alright, so the next thing now is for you to attach your yoke. But before then, just match the two yoke together. Then you sew together at the neckline, then you turn it to the good side and iron, then you attach your yoke to the bodice. Then you go ahead and attach the yoke to the bodice by just placing it on top of each other, right side to right side. And then make sure you pin at the center. So you sew it to the left and you also sew it to the right. So now I'm done joining it. So the next thing now is just to place um so before you attach the the lining make sure you drag it down this way and pin it to the body so that the seam allowance over there can lay flat see the way i'm doing it allowance can lay flat here Okay, you can see now this place is flat. So you place this one on top of it, right side facing each other. And then you are going to stitch this directly on top of it. Or you can just turn it to the wrong side so that you can follow your previous seam allowance. Okay, make sure you align it properly. So I'm done stitching it. The next thing is just to notch. So by the time you turn it to the good side, to the good side, it can relax properly. So we are done. Turn it to the good side now. You can take off your pins. So we are done. Next thing is to insert my bone inside the channel. So I'm going to be following this direction of the bone. This curved part is going to be going in this way okay so i'm done starting the bone inside so you can press it down so that you can relax this is how it's looking and from the wrong side 
this is it so you first off join the lining to lining and then fabric to fabric okay you join lining to lining So what you need to do next now is for you to match this together right side to right side the right side of the wrapper will be facing the right upper part then you match you flip your lining out of the way like this so you make the same cut little tiny cut then you match them together you pin then you sew it sew this together like this to the left and when you're done you also come back here and sew it to the right okay when you're done sewing the main fabric you also attach the lining the same way to the lining of the hopper so this is it and then from the wrong side So this is the concluding part of this ongoing tutorial so if you have not watched the first two please kindly go ahead and watch it it's very important so that you can understand the tutorial better so if you would like to see a tutorial on how i cut and make the sleeve please let me know in the comment section so that i can upload that tutorial also otherwise we'll just go ahead and move on to the next topic okay